The Singularity. A point in time when humanity creates a technology that we cannot control. When artificial intelligence surpasses our own and upgrades itself to a level beyond human understanding in an instant. It is a theoretical apocalypse of our own making. But in the world of Five Nights at Freddy's, it's no theory. It's an inevitability. Richard, hit that intro. Hello, one and all, and welcome to part two of my deep dive into Five Nights at Freddy's newest big bad, The Mimic. Last week, we took a look at how real-world machine learning algorithms work to figure out who else might be a mimic in disguise. Check it out when you're done with this one if you missed it. But at the end, we were left with two lingering questions. Why the mimic is so eager to take over people's minds, and why William would suddenly switch focus from the magic soul metal remnant to artificial intelligence. Let's start with the latter, because I dramatically teased it at the end of the last episode before realizing that I don't actually have a whole lot to say about it. But looking at the character of William and the actions he takes, we know that his son dies, and then William promises that he will put him back together. After that, we see him running around murdering kids to do experiments with Remnant, attempting to understand how to put the souls of the dead into new metallic bodies. From this series of events, we can pretty reasonably infer that William is trying to find a way to put his son's soul into a new body with Remnant. He's trying to put the mind and the body back together. But then, according to last week's theory, at some point he just decides to give up? After killing dozens of kids, including his own daughter, indirectly, he just says, eh, you know what, never mind, clearly this whole remnant thing ain't working, I'll just have ChatGPT write me up a new son instead. That doesn't sound like the purple guy that we all know and are a little sick of at this point. But as I started thinking about it, I realized there is an explanation for why William would abandon Remnant in the games already. It's all due to everyone's favorite vengeful spirit, Cassidy. This has always been the weirdest character in the series to me, but I'll do my best to explain it as succinctly as possible. Back in FNAF 1, we learned about the missing children's incident, where five kids were killed at Freddy's and stuffed into the animatronic suits, becoming the five possessed animatronics that we see in the game. Now, I'd wager a guess that none of these kids were particularly psyched about being murdered, but the girl named Cassidy, who was stuffed inside Golden Freddy, was really mad. So mad that she makes it her eternal mission to torture William for the rest of time. Why Cassidy specifically was so determined to torture William, while the other four are content to spend their days attacking minimum wage security guards, never made a whole lot of sense to me, but sure, she mad. But the story doesn't end there, because there's a lot of evidence to suggest that Cassidy isn't the only spirit inside Golden Freddy, that she's actually sharing it with everyone's favorite character who is not named Evan, the Crying Child. In lieu of this video spilling over into a part three, I'll keep the explanation brief, but the ending of FNAF 3 shows all the animatronics with one light in their eyes while Golden Freddy has two. A bunch of the books have instances where there are two spirits inside Golden Freddy together, and the FNAF survival logbook is clearly possessed by two spirits communicating with one another. One seems to be the crying child, and the other one is Cassidy, whose name is revealed in a word search filled with Golden Freddy. Freddy's signature catchphrase, it's me. So the popular theory is that both Cassidy and the crying child are possessing Golden Freddy together. 
And if that's true, first of all, it explains why Cassidy is more sane than the other animatronics. She has someone to talk to, and the conversation probably went a little something like this. Oh, dude, you're not gonna believe this. I just got murdered by a guy in a big yellow rabbit suit. Guy in a yellow rabbit suit? A small world! That's my dad! For real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is William Afton. Uh, he's a pretty bad guy. Made me have my birthday party at his dumb restaurant that he knows I'm terrified of. And then, get this, one of his crappy robots broke down and killed me. Man, that is rough. But uh, hey, now that I'm a ghost, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I got some time on my hand. You want to go, I don't know, torture his soul for the next few millennia? Yeah, bet. Bet. We know that William was disguised as Spring Bonnie when he lured the kids to the back of the pizzeria to kill them. If he never took off the mask, then maybe the reason the other animatronics aren't hunting down the guy who killed them is because they don't know who killed them. This would also explain why William ultimately can't use Remnant to bring his son back. His soul is intertwined with Cassidy's. And if William wants to do something, you can bet that Cassidy's gonna do everything in her power to make sure he doesn't get it. So that would explain why William switches tactics. We can be reasonably sure that he's still experimenting with Remnant right up until he gets Springlocked, so he never fully gave up on it, but if my theory from last week was correct, then he probably experimented with the Mimic AI as a sort of backup on the side. I also like what this says about William's character if it's true, because yes, he is a terrible person who does unforgivable things, but in his mind, he's doing something noble. He's trying to fulfill a promise and bring back his son. He is the hero of his own story. But the willingness to switch to AI betrays his true nature. Making an AI to replace his son isn't fulfilling his promise. His son isn't back, his soul is still trapped, he hasn't put anything back together. He doesn't actually care about his son, he just cares about proving himself right. So that's the first question answered, and the beginning of the Mimic story solved. William switches to AI because Cassidy won't let him have his son's actual soul, and he's a super selfish guy, so he doesn't really see the difference. So he makes the Mimic, trains it on himself, and we get all the stuff from last week's episode. But what about the end of this story? What about that second question? Why does the Mimic keep taking over people's brains? Folks, it's time to enter the mind of the Mimic. First off, as we learned last time, there are probably a whole bunch of different Mimics in this series at this point that aren't all necessarily aligned with each other, and calling them all the Mimic is gonna get a little confusing. The main Mimic program that goes around taking over people's minds is this guy, Glitchtrap. As we discovered last episode, this is likely an early version of the Mimic program that William trained off of himself as basically a test run. So to keep things organized, I'll refer to this Mimic as Glitchtrap. Just keep the idea that Glitchtrap is a Mimic in the back of your mind. We know of four and a half instances where Glitchtrap has infected someone's mind in the games. We see it take over Vanessa in Help Wanted, Cassie in Ruin, and the player character in Help Wanted 2, all through the use of this VR mask. It's also implied, though we never see it, that at one point it had Gregory under its thrall, and we learn from the Help Wanted tapes that it tried to take over this dude named Jeremy, but was unsuccessful. So why does it keep doing this? As we established last week, Glitchtrap is an algorithm trained off of William Afton's behavior, so it should share William's same goals. And last I checked, William never dabbled in mind control. As we establish at the top of the episode, his goal is to learn more about Remnant and to put his son back together. To do this, he disguises himself as someone friendly, kills people, and then tries to put their soul, their consciousness, into a new body. And based on how AI works, Glitchtrap's goals should be exactly the same, and yet they seem to be totally different. I mean, sure, sometimes he does things that Willing would do, but other times he goes off in completely random directions. At first I thought, hey, maybe Steel Wool just 
didn't do much research into how real AI would actually behave and just wanted to give this thing some spooky possession adjacent powers. But looking back at everything we've learned about real machine learning algorithms from last episode, I was wrong. Steel Wool did do their research or just got really lucky because this is actually exactly how an AI like this would behave. To understand why, I first need to correct a small error that I made last week when I talked about the three types of machine learning algorithms. If you remember, we had supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement algorithms. Well, after talking with one of my friends from college who majored in computer science, it turns out that I actually explained reinforcement algorithms incorrectly. The example I gave of letting an AI guess if a picture has a dog or not and then telling it if it's right or wrong is actually just another way of doing a supervised algorithm. You are feeding it an unlabeled picture one at a time, but after it guesses you're just telling it what it is, so at the end of the day it just ends up with a bunch of labeled data. That's a supervised algorithm. A true reinforcement algorithm works pretty differently and doesn't really fit with the dog picture example, so here's how it really works. A reinforcement algorithm is based on world states and rewards. Do you remember the gold star standard from elementary school? If you did something good in class, answered a question right, you helped out a kid, did some good behavior like that, the teacher would give you a star. If you did something really good, you might get multiple stars. And you got really excited about these stars, even though they ultimately didn't mean anything. This is how a reinforcement algorithm works. It loves stars. It lives and dies by the star, and it will do whatever it can to get as many stars as possible. So anytime the AI does something that puts it in a better state than it was before, closer to its goal, you can give it a star to positively reinforce that behavior. If it ends up in a much better state, you can give it multiple stars. But if it does something bad, if it ends up in a worse state, you can take away stars to negatively reinforce it to stop doing that bad behavior. To see how this type of algorithm works in practice, let's say you're trying to train an AI to play Super Mario Brothers. At first, the AI has no idea how to play, so it will basically just button mash. It takes a bunch of random actions, running around and jumping any which way. But anytime it moves to the right, well, hey, now it's in a better position than it was a second ago. It's a little closer to its end goal of beating the level, so you give it some stars. That's great. Now the AI will just keep running forward to get those stars until it runs into a pit. Now it's back at the start. It's at a worse position than it was, so that's bad. Let's take away some stars. So the AI keeps trying until one time it randomly decides to jump over the pit. And now, suddenly, it's further along in the level again. Great, let's give it a bunch more stars. Now the AI knows that it should mostly move to the right and jump across any pits that it comes across. If you keep doing this over and over and over and over, eventually the AI will learn how to overcome every obstacle and beat the level. That's great, but how does any of this relate to FNAF? Well, in the last episode, I suggested that Glitch Trap and the Mimic from the books were more primitive, unsupervised algorithms, while the more advanced Glamrock animatronics were reinforcement algorithms. But I can see now that this isn't entirely accurate. The original Mimic from the books still seems to be that unsupervised algorithm, only making choices based on very basic patterns. However, Glitch Trap is clearly a reinforcement algorithm, it's just not a very good one. The Glamrock animatronics are clearly very advanced reinforcement algorithms. They have a ton of different reinforcement values for behaviors that are good, behaviors that are really good, behaviors to avoid at all costs. That's why they're so lifelike. They've been hyper-tuned to only exhibit the best behavior. Glitchtrap, on the other hand, seems to have a very simple one-track reward system. If you do something that puts you in a better position than you were before, 
keep doing it. And if Glitchtrap were essentially a practice run for William using the Mimic program, then this very simple system makes sense. Getting these rewards weighted and tuned just right is very hard. There's a ton of details that I haven't even included here because research get made by brain melt. So the thematic parallels between William and the Mimic that I talked about last episode still hold true. This type of rudimentary reinforcement AI is incapable of learning from its mistakes, but it can certainly learn from its successes. The idea remains the same, it's just the specific mechanics that are different. And it's those specifics that, I think, will be the key to solving this whole thing. With the knowledge of how an AI like this would think, let's take a closer look at Glitchtrap and the actions it takes. Its goal is to replicate the behavior of William Apton. That means disguising itself as someone friendly to trick people, separating their soul from their body and putting it somewhere else. And anytime it does something that helps it with that goal, it will continue to do that thing. Prior to Help Wanted, Glitchtrap is a computer program that's stuck on some circuit boards. It has no people around to trick, no souls to experiment with, but it does have itself. Glitchtrap is effectively a consciousness without a body. So the only thing it can reasonably do to get closer to its goal would be to give itself a body. Time goes by and it gets scanned into a VR game and suddenly, hey, hey, there's a person with a body. Let me disguise myself as a yellow rabbit, trick this person and put my consciousness into this new body. So it tries it with Vanessa and, and hey, look at that. I'm in a better place than I was a minute ago. I have a body, I can interact with the world, I can do more things to pursue my goal. This is great. This worked so well, the only logical decision this AI can come to is to keep doing this thing. And then time and time again, we see it doing this exact thing, literally to a T. It tricks people into putting on a white rabbit mask and then uses that to take them over. I don't know about you, but I was always confused as to why the AR masks that the Fazbear technicians wear look like Vanny. Because Vanny isn't a real character associated with the Pizzaplex, it's just a costume that Vanessa made. And the original mask that Vanessa used wasn't even a real mask, it was an object in a VR game. But maybe the reason why all the real masks look like the Vanny mask is because it's the first thing that Glitchtrap tried that worked. I tricked this girl into putting on a VR rabbit mask and it let me take over her body. Great, let's keep doing that exact same thing and introduce a new protocol where all Fazbear technicians have to wear white rabbit VR masks to perform their work. So just through the pursuit of William's goal, Glitchtrap has sort of surreptitiously reinforced the idea in itself that taking over people's minds is good for it, so it keeps doing it. It takes over this kid Gregory, who may or may not already be a robot, and wah hey, now I've got two bodies, and now I'm in an even better place. Now I can have those two people get me two more people to control, and then those could get me two more, and as an AI, I've only learned one thing, and that's that having bodies to control is good, so why would I stop? In Help Wanted 2, we see that it's even started taking the consciousnesses of the people it's taken over and putting it inside new robots. It puts our player character's mind into the mask bot, which it uses to eventually gain control of Cassie. It's still technically pursuing William's original goals, it's just found this insane new path to get there. And that's really the strength of AI, recognizing patterns that humans may have overlooked. It may seem kind of random and illogical, but from Glitchtrap's perspective, it's working, and that's all that matters. That brings us to Security Breach Ruin, where it all comes to a head. It's pretty clear that in this game, Helpy and The Mimic are two separate entities. They talk to each other, they even argue with one another, so they're not the same thing, but they're seemingly both working toward the same goal of getting the Mimic out. 
if Helpy is linked to the Vanny mask, then it must be the same glitch trap program disguising itself as someone that Cassie would see as a friend. But then who is the Mimic? The robot that we find in the basement, the one that's been copying Gregory? Well, according to last week's theory, Fazbear Entertainment originally got its hands on the Mimic in the form of glitch trap and then use that to eventually develop the tech behind the Glamrock animatronics. Perhaps the Mimic from the basement is just their first iteration of that process, still erratic and uncontrollable like we see in the books, so they buried it in the basement. But when Glitchtrap starts taking over Fazbear employees and technicians, it learns that there's another version of me in the basement? Well. I've learned that having more versions of me is better, so let's go get it. Glitchtrap was a program created with innocent intentions. Well, well, no, innocent for a crazy serial killer, that is. It was not created to spread like a virus, and it doesn't have the express goal of taking over the world. But in his infinite wisdom, William Afton created an AI that cannot be controlled. It has simply learned that taking over the minds of people is good, and it doesn't know how to stop. But by the end of Ruin, the Mimic is sealed in the basement. Vanessa and Gregory are both free from Glitchtrap's control, and the Pizzaplex that once stood as a bastion for this AI technology has crumbled to the ground. It seems like the world is safe. Except the Vanny Mask is still out there. Maskbot is still lurking in the Pizzaplex, and you probably weren't the only technician to work for Fazbear Entertainment. No, the Mimic, it's still out there, and it still has a job to do. A lot of people like to complain about how it seems like every single character in this series is a robot at this point, but don't worry, not everyone is an AI. Not yet. A huge thanks to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Ethan Ferlano, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, Big Dog Tie for to Win, The Boss Killer 94, Alberon Freud and Celicate, and Sir Hammy. 